Today on FNAF Unsolved, we take a first step into the world of Freddy's, now a shutdown establishment, and we explore one of the crimes of the century that led to the end of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a magical place for kids and grown ups to life, where fantasy and fun come to life. You must be <laughs> absolutely insane to come here. Like, if I went to any sort of restaurant or pizzeria, I would not want to be greeted by this massive smiling bear when I come through the door. No child would come in, no children. I would get someone to to, to pay me like 50 bucks to even get me to enter this pizzeria, no siree. The establishments were shut down and abandoned not many years after they first opened. The co-founders of the company it was run by, Fazbear Entertainment, were called William Afton and Henry Emily. But little did they know when building the foundations that one day one of them would be a murderer. June 26th of an unknown year, five children suddenly vanished with no evidence as to where they had gone. There was one similarity between all five children, however. They had all visited and gone missing at the same location, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, leading to a shutdown of the company. Can you just imagine? You're this, I don't know, 21 year old guy and you've opened your own business and everything, then one day you suddenly say to yourself, ha, I'm going to troll myself, I'm gonna, gonna kill a few of our customers and shut my own business down. You must either really hate the other co-founder or you literally hate everyone. I mean, there's just no logic to it. Maybe this should be the unsolved mystery of the killer's motivation. In 1993, one abandoned pizzeria in particular was explored and was found to be haunted. A man by the name of Mike Schmidt was one to take the role as a night guard at this location and discovered tapes of an instructor being slaughtered by something supernatural. Oh, hello! Hey! Hey, wow, day four. I knew you could do it. Uh, hey, listen, uh, I may not be around to send you a message tomorrow. It's, it's been a bad night here for me. Um, I'm kind of glad that I recorded my messages for you. <clears throat> so when I did, uh, hey, do me a favor. Uh, maybe sometime uh, you could check inside those suits uh, in the back room. Uh, I'm going to try to hold out until someone checks. Maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah, I, I, I always wondered what was in all those empty heads back there. You know. Oh no. This man who has not yet been identified was previously a night guard and had informed Mike about what to expect. And what occurred was something so absurd. The robots would move around at night, though switched off. It was as if something had controlled them. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica and Foxy were alive during the night, bloodthirsty as Mike was in the main office for six hours every night. If you worked at this abandoned pizzeria and you saw Bonnie's gaze through a doorway as if he wanted to kill you, what would you do? Because let's be honest, there's not a lot that you could really do, especially when you're playing with essentially uh, demons. Nobody would believe you either, so you can't just be like, I'm going to tell my mama about you. I would probably just drop everything, flip off a few animatronics while they're still inactive and walk straight out the door. I don't care if I get fired. I do care, however, if I get fired, if you know what I mean. I'm so, so maybe this should be the unsolved mystery of the night guard's motivation. And that's exactly what happened. Mike was fired for quote, tampering with the animatronics, general unprofessionalism, odor, and quote. At least he was able to leave the job with a soul. But what happened? One day children go missing, and then a whole chain of establishments go haunted. There's missing information such as who the guy on the phone is, where the dead bodies went, and who the murderer was. So, let's get into the theories on what actually happened to the abandoned pizza place. The first theory places the name for the phone guy as Dave. Policemen in the area found the culprit, and they went by the name Dave, or formerly known as William Afton. Afton was the killer of the children all along, and was always hidden in the shadows. Evidence for him being the phone guy is he states in a tape recorded back in 1987 how Foxy was his favourite, whilst he has three children, one of which always wears the Foxy mask. Uh, hello, hello! Uh, do you think I could be 
you wouldn't have any problems. Did uh, Foxy ever appear in the hallway? Probably not. I was just curious. Like I said, he was always my favorite. They tried to remake Foxy, you know? Uh, they thought the first one was too scary, so they redesigned him to be more kid-friendly and put him in Kid's Cove uh, to keep the toddlers entertained, you know. It is possible that Afton hints towards his family here, but this theory doesn't exactly add up. Who the instructor is, nobody knows, but he was slaughtered on tape, and Afton still lives. Oh, oh, hey, hey, wow, well, day four, I knew you could do it. Uh, hey, listen, uh, I may not be around to send you a message tomorrow, but it's, it's been a bad night here for me. Um, I'm kind of glad that I recorded my messages for you. <laughs> Uh, when I did. Uh, hey, do me a favor. Uh, maybe sometime uh, you could check inside those suits uh, in the back room. Uh, I'm going to try to hold out until someone checks. Maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah, I, I, I always wondered what was in all those empty heads back there. You know. Oh no. Additionally, in the same year's tape, the phone guy speaks about someone who used a yellow suit when they weren't supposed to. Could this have been Afton? And could this incident have occurred in 1987? Do you ever just lose track of years? I mean, I'm almost 18 and it feels like I've been on this rock for at least 50 years. Time is hard to keep a grasp of, but why does nobody know what year this was? Well, I'll tell you. The parents don't pay attention and they don't know what year their children went missing. You're at a restaurant and a few hours in, you realize that your child has been missing for a while. You call the police and they ask you what time they went missing. How are you supposed to know? Oh yeah, it was approximately 2.51 p.m. when I saw my child go missing. <laughs> the second theory accounts for the bigger story of the missing children's incident. There were five children and there were four animatronics. If there was just one more animatronic, it would make sense that the children's souls were the things that were controlling the robots. From other workings of Afton Robotics, blueprints show that other animatronics were designed to capture children. There was a luring device used to lure the children to the animatronic, and there was a storage tank which was planned to contain infants. The theory also explains why the animatronics were said to have an ooze of blood and mucus, and why if you listen close enough you can hear the screaming and the insanity of the children inside. Additionally, workers were said to have seen one other animatronic within the building, a hallucination, if you will, of a yellow-coloured Freddy. This theory includes this animatronic, who is said to have lived in the kitchen, where the cameras are disabled. It is believed that what is called the Golden Freddy is the most supernatural of them all, glitching through walls and haunting anybody who enters the building but nobody knows why he is the most powerful, nor why he is there at all. I think this holds a good theory. Sure, it can be developed upon, but it creates this connection between these haunted animatronics that have suddenly turned savage, and these five children who suddenly went missing. It makes sense for the children to have been stuffed into these animatronics, but the amount of voodoo required to get them to walk around the night. Oh, but Jesus. I can only make myself toast without burning it, and these children are dead, ready for revenge I guess? All five children were inside of these five animatronics, but it is certainly unknown as to why they act like they do. Which brings us to the final theory. Supposing the children were in fact killed and stuffed into these robots, what makes them want to kill Schmidt? One theory states that it is all for revenge, and that Mike Schmidt is none other than William Afton. He gets fired for odour something that could definitely be due to the guilt of murdering five children. From also being fired for tampering with the animatronics, could it be that an experiment went wrong and led to Afton trying to stop himself being murdered by his own murders? Either that, or Mike Schmidt is somebody alike Afton, a shadowy figure that is easy enough to confuse with when you were a child. Whoever Mike Schmidt is, he is a monster, and lucky enough to escape the pizzeria with his body. I think Mike Schmidt could be Barney the Dinosaur. Weren't there like, weren't there five children in that TV show? Also there was a TV show called Fred Bear and Friends that first started in 1983, like Barney and Friends that also started in 1983. 
I think we have ourselves a winning theory. With the speculation of what happened to the children with now identified names, Gabriel, Susie, Fritz, Jeremy, and Cassidy, this incident could be classed as the line that was crossed to lead to the closing of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And with continued hallucinations and supernatural events, this case remains unsolved. Thank you.